All right, everyone, it's been about one month since the Google Pixel 7a has been out. And one thing I can definitely tell you is, is that with this device, it definitely is a very interesting phone. You know, I think it's a good phone overall. I wish Google had sent us these things earlier so I could get my hands on them and test them when they first came out. But regardless, I was able to get my hands on one eventually, and I still like the Pixel 7a. I think it's a pretty good phone. I don't know if this would be the first phone I'd recommend buying, though. Because I feel like with the Google Pixel 7, those things have gone down in value so much that it kind of makes sense to just buy a used Pixel 7 or even a Pixel 7 on Amazon than a Pixel 7a, considering you can probably find that phone for the same price, if not cheaper, than the Pixel 7a. So keep that in mind. The display is the one thing that's decent on this phone. You're getting that 6.1 inch OLED display, and I do think it's a pretty decent panel. It's not the best panel. I'm glad it's 90 hertz coming from the 60 hertz panel we had on the Pixel 6a, and it looks good hole punch display, USB-C on the bottom. On the back though, this is the interesting thing. This is a plastic back that you're getting on this phone, but it kind of does feel like somewhat of a glass back. It's really weird, I don't know how to explain it, but this is this and the Pixel 6a. Both of these backs are just backs that I look at, and I'm like, how is this not glass? Like after you kind of mess around with it a little bit, you kind of get the idea that it isn't glass, but wow, it did kind of shock me a little bit. It felt very similar to the Pixel 7. It might be because the aluminum frame on this phone makes it give the impression that it is still like somewhat of a glass back. Maybe because the rest of the phone feels more premium, but it feels kind of nice and it's a really nice touch. This phone also has wireless charging, which I'm really happy about. Thank goodness this type of phone has it. And you have that dual camera setup on the back. I would say the outside looks beautiful. That camera as well is actually pretty good still. 64 megapixel wide, 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera on the front. And what's funny is, is that I think this camera has one of the highest megapixel counts on any Google Pixel. So it's very funny they went down this direction of giving it such massive, you know, megapixels. You can need 4K at 30 on the front, 4K at 60 on the back. Again, some very solid resolutions you can film in. And I don't know if this camera is like amazing, but it's a decent camera for the price that you're paying for. And I definitely think it's more of a pro than a con here. So there's still going to be lots of updates coming to the, these Pixel cameras, and I'm happy that this phone is also probably going to appreciate these things too. Now in terms of software and longevity, we all know this phone's going to be lasting quite a bit of time on Android, so we really don't have too much to complain about here. It's going to be lasting for a couple of more years, and that's pretty much it there. In terms of performance, this phone had that Google Tensor G2 chipset inside of it with 8GB of RAM. Now, the thing with the Pixel 7a to keep in mind is that this type of device is still going to be getting, is still going to be giving you almost the same type of performance as the Google Pixel 7. So I say that to say on the Pixel 7, you're going to be getting a very solid performing phone. And that's something that I really do like about the Pixel 7a is that it's giving you the same type of performance. It has the same internals almost for the most part. And realistically speaking, no matter what you're going to do with it, you're going to be perfectly fine. You're going to be able to go ahead and play pretty intensive games on this thing. You're going to be able to play, you know, if you want to do some standard, you know, office work, or if you want to reply to emails, messages, texts, stuff like that, this is going to be perfectly fine. But even the heavy intensive stuff, I feel like some applications and some game developers are starting to kind of take more advantage of the Tensor chipset. So hopefully they do some better things for those monthly GPUs that these phones have. A lot of the ones they require Snapdragon to really perform fairly high. So I guess we'll see what happens here, but I definitely do think something like the you know Pixel 7a has the ability to get better over time. But I'm hoping, you know, the app developers and game developers do a better job at, you know, utilizing that Mali GPU for sure. So to kind of sum up this video, what I'll tell you is I definitely do think a phone like the Pixel 7a is a very good phone. I think it's a very, very good. I just think it's overpriced for what you're paying for. Even though this is the cheapest Pixel, it's still something that I feel like Google could be doing a better job at at least releasing this thing at the same time as the Pixel 7. So then these things appreciate in value a little bit more. Or I don't even know, like making the Pixel 7s not depreciate that much in the used market, but I don't even like that. I want to be able to buy my phones for as cheap as possible. And the Pixel 7a, Pixel 7, and Pixel 7 Pro, you could probably find in the used market for not that far from each other, you know, to be honest, maybe like within a couple hundred dollars. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.